Hey, it's John Hibitoshnik. The question is, how do you handle the ever-changing fuel costs? Prices are moving up and down. How do you handle that in your bids? We really don't handle that in our bids. I know a lot of companies will do a fuel surcharge, so they will tell their clients that due to extremely high prices, we're going to have a fuel sur surcharge. It's going to be based on a certain price. So I'll tell you that we don't do that, but let me tell you in one of my other companies, we did add a fuel surcharge. So this is not in the lawn care industry, but it's another industry where I have trucks and and we were doing a tremendous amount of travel. These trucks were moving between states. In that business, we did finally implement a fuel surcharge. And what we did, we notified all of our clients. We sent out a letter to all of our clients informing them of the surcharge, telling them exactly what was going on, why it was happening, explaining how we were going to handle it. And we were very upfront and very clear about it. We didn't hide anything. We just told them exactly how it was. And they got it. They completely understood because in, they, they get the fuel price problem. They're paying the high price at the pump themselves when they drive. And so they understand exactly what's going on. And so it's not necessarily a shock to them. So in that case, what we did is we set a benchmark. And I'll make up some numbers. I don't remember the exact number. But we might have said that the benchmark was based on fuel at $2.30 a gallon. And for every so many for every so much that it increased, we would increase our surcharge. So our surcharge basically fluctuated. And I don't know if this was the right approach, but it was a way that, um, the way that we handled it. And then if fuel prices were to drop, drop back to that two, hypothetical $2.30 price, then the surcharge would just automatically go away. And so it was only implemented when fuel prices were over and above that. And at the time that we implemented, they were well above the $2.30 price. And so that's basically the procedure that we put in place. I think we set the prices once a month based on whatever fuel was it at the pump for that at the beginning of the month. And that's the amount we charged as our surcharge for the month to all of our clients that we perform services for. So really zero pushback. Uh, not a single client complained. Nobody canceled. No problems whatsoever. Zero pushback. Now our ticket sales were a higher price ticket and that in that business our probably our average transaction was eighteen hundred dollars the price probably varied between a thousand and thirty two hundred per service call for that particular business so um, a higher transaction obviously a little different than if you're doing a maintenance a maintenance service and it's forty bucks more. so the point is that's how we handled fuel surcharges. We implemented surcharges with zero trouble, zero problems, zero cancellations. Now, let's talk about what I do on the lawn care side of the business. Through all that time, through all the time of having fluctuating fuel prices, we never adjusted our price and we never implemented a sur fuel surcharge. Never talked about it, never did it. Um, likewise, along this time, if you're in the fertilization weed control business, you've got skyrocketing prices on chemicals and fertilizer and such. Never adjusted those prices either. So this was a conscious decision on our part. We have a, we have a, a lot of clients uh, approaching 2000. We just chose to not implement the fuel surcharge. We really are concerned with the thought that we might be nickeling and dimeling our clients. The surcharge spread out across each client would actually be quite small because we have so many clients because there's so a smaller amount of drive time. In the other business I referenced, there was a lot of driving involved, a tremendous amount. Um, some of our trucks would go out 300 miles, perform 10 days worth of work, and then return back 300 miles. So they'd have a round trip of six, seven, eight hundred miles. There was a lot of fuel involved. Some of those trips involved over a thousand miles of driving, a lot of fuel, but in our local market, we might send a truck out and it might travel 40 miles and throughout its entire day, maybe more, maybe less, but it's not nearly the mileage that we encountered in the other scenario that really prompted us to implement something in the way of a fuel surcharge. And so rather than implementing something that equates to quite a small fuel charge, and granted it would have been a nice amount of money to us as a whole throughout our whole client base, but let's say we're adding 
35 cents to a client bill for mowing their lawn for 40 bucks. And again, I'm making up these numbers, but just hypothetically, let's say it's 35 cents. To a 30, 35 cents to a client feels petty. To me, if I have 2,000 clients and I'm getting an extra 35 cents per week from 2,000 clients, that adds up to money. That adds up to truly offsetting a little bit of the increased fuel cost. But from the client's perspective, 35 cents seems like it's 35 cents. Why are these, you know, these bums nickel and diming me for 35 cents? I'm already paying them 40. It just feels cheap to the client. They don't understand our perspective that, yeah, it's 35 cents times 2,000 clients. It adds up to real money. So they don't see it. So from their perspective, it would have been petty. From their perspective, it would have just been, ah, what are these guys doing? It wouldn't have put us in a good light, so why do it? So we said, we're not going to mess with it. Rather, what I would do is if I'm going to deal with fuel surcharges, which I have more problems than fuel surcharges, you know, I have chemical cost and fertilizer and everything else that's going on in the industry, labor and all the other problems. If I'm really going to deal with something, what I'm going to do is just raise the price. I'm going to raise the price of my clients. And I'm going to realize that in raising the price, I might lose some percentage of my clients. Now, without going into pricing discussion, the numbers are fascinating when you talk about you could raise your prices 10%, lose 25% of your client base and break even. Um, there's some interesting numbers like that depending on your net profit. So we're not gonna go there, but uh, raising prices isn't really as scary of a thing as you might think it is when you really start running the numbers on price increases. So that's not the discussion. The discussion is increasing the price or fuel surcharges. I really just didn't participate in that. I chose to stay out. I think if you want to do a fuel surcharge, then you might implement it as we did with our other company. But if you think you can avoid it, I'd recommend you do not implement it. I'd recommend that if you need to adjust prices, just simply adjust the price and leave it and just do it that way. And then if fuel prices move down, all the better, you're ahead of the game. I'm just not too much of a fan of tacking on additional costs, especially when they're small. And so the client just sees it as 35 cents. You know, you're wasting my time. This is ridiculous. You guys are petty. That's why we didn't do it. Something else I'd mention is fuel costs. If you look at a P&L or you look at your profit loss statement for your business, fuel costs should be a very, very small piece of your business. Only a few points, uh, per, only a few percentage points of your business. And so if you really want to focus your effort on something, I'd really look at labor. How can you optimize labor? That's probably the biggest cost you have in your business. You know, then you've maybe got a materials cost if you're in a landscape business. Maybe you look at your chemical cost, fertilizer, chemicals, whatever. Maybe you look at um, insurance costs, things of that sort. But if you want to zero in on any one thing to focus on in your business, I'd look at payroll. If you shed just a couple points off payroll by better... Uh, implementing a good computer system where you guys have handhelds where you can track them better where there's more accountability where you see everything that's going on are they working fast are they getting in and out of the job quick how's it compared to what they did last week and three months ago you know what's going on where are they slower what are your procedures to get them into your office or into your uh, your facility get all their equipment and get out fast and likewise do the same thing again at the end of the night shaving off 15 minutes per crew or 15 minutes per man 30 minutes per man per day, that equates to some real money. Focusing on that, you can easily save enough money to offset your entire fuel bill for the year. So um, I'm not belittling or taking away at all from the discussion on fuel because I agree, I feel the pain and that's very, very relevant. But um, I chose to ignore it just simply because of the perception it might have with my clients and therefore I just feel that it's more important to